on the recording here. Um, today is probably going to be a very short day. The material that we're covering today is fairly easy. And we've talked about it a couple times in the past with the derivative graph. Um, and the, the assessment this week, the two assessments are fairly easy to do. I don't think you'll have too many problems with them. So let's take a look. Um, for this week, we're gonna be connecting the, the derivative graphs. Uh, and when you look at a derivative graph, and when you, an AP exam usually has two or three derivative graphs on them. And you just have to be really good at just looking at them and, and figuring out what they're asking for. And second semester, we'll be doing a lot more of these types of graphs. Um, but if, if this is a derivative graph right here that they give us, I always tell students, everything above the x-axis, the, because what they're really asking for when they give you a derivative graph is they're asking, what is happening to the original graph? So if this is, if this is f prime of x, they're really asking you what is happening on f of x, okay? So if you look at the derivative graph, you can tell on the original graph between negative three and negative two, it's increasing because it, the function is above the x-axis. Between negative two and four, that graph, the, the f graph is decreasing because it's below the x-axis. Between four and five, it's increasing because it's above the x-axis. Now, we should be able to tell any time it crosses the x-axis, there should be a max or min. Well, if it's increasing here, so if it's increasing and then it decreases here, so I usually tell kids just write increase, decrease, increase. So if it's increasing here and decreasing, that means this has to be a maximum point. This one, it's decreasing, then it's increasing, so this has to be a local min. So from the derivative graph, we should be able to tell where the original graph is increasing and decreasing. We should also be able to tell where the max and mins are. So now we should also be able to tell where the function is concave up, concave down, and where the inflection points are. And to tell that, okay, so this is the exact same graph here, but if the, the slope is negative, we know that it has to be concave down there. So between negative, oops, I gotta turn on my marker here. Between negative three and negative one, I know that this is concave down. Where it changes slope from positive to negative, we know there has to be a point of inflection there. So this is an inflection point. So now it, now it has positive slope between negative one and one, so that means it has, um, con it's gonna be concave up. Then it's gonna be concave down here, concave up. Point of inflection, because it changes from positive to negative or negative to positive. So given a derivative graph, there is so much information that we can tell from that derivative graph. Now, if I give you, let's say, I'm gonna just do a, a blank screen here, okay? So let's say I gave you a function, and this is where, you know, I always, I always go back to, you know, graphs that I know what the functions are going to look like. So if I drew a graph of x squared, let me change the color here. So this is x squared. And this is f of x. So from f of x, I can tell just because now we should be able to tell, okay, it's decreasing from, so it's decreasing from negative infinity to zero, and it's increasing from zero to infinity. I can tell just by looking at it that it's concave up everywhere. Okay, so I'll do negative infinity to infinity, um, I know that there is a minimum point at zero, zero. So those are all the things I can just look at an f of x graph, but that's, that's not the objective this week. The objective this week is to look at the derivative graph 
and be able to tell what's happening with the original graph. So the derivative graph for this thing, if I was going to uh, just do the derivative graph, if this is all you came up with, oops. Okay, so if that's all they gave you is they gave you just the derivative graph, this is what it would look like. This is what the derivative graph of f of f of x equals x squared, because remember the derivative would just be 2x. I guess it would be going up a little bit faster. But now if we take what we know, so any place that's above the x-axis, it's increasing. So from zero to infinity, it's increasing. From negative infinity to zero, it's decreasing because it's below the x-axis. Since it has a point, it's crossing the x-axis here. It's decreasing, then increasing. So decrease and increase. We know there's a minimum point at x equals zero. Now concavity, since it has a positive slope everywhere, we know it's concave up from negative infinity to infinity. So what we're really doing this week is we're, we're given this graph. And what we have to do is we have to tell what's this graph look like. And we don't have to know what the exact graph looks like. We just have to know where is it increasing? Where is it decreasing? Where's it concave up? Where's it concave down? Where's there an inflection point? And in this problem, there's no inflection points because it never changes concave or it never changes slope. So that is the ma majority of what we're doing this week. You're going to be given derivative graphs and you have to answer those types of questions. So let's take a look at an example. So now I have to get back to my uh, files here. Okay, week number 16. Okay, so we did that, we did that. So here's our first example. So what I would like you to do um, is I'd like you to work through this. Okay, so here, this is the derivative graph. So they give me the derivative graph. I want you to find what is, um, at what value of x does f have a relative min? Where does it have a relative max? Determine any intervals where it's concave down. Um, and then, uh, well, we I don't care about sketching the graph of the interval. Um, that, that makes no difference to me. But what I'd like you to do, well, yeah, let's, let's sketch that graph out also, okay? So let's make a sketch of that graph. So I'm going to give you a couple minutes to work on that and see how you how far you get.
All right, let's take a look at this. All right, so x equals negative 5, x equals 5. That's going to be, um, so it wants to know at what values of x has a relative minimum. So we're increasing, then we're decreasing. So let's see here. I'm going to change my marker color here, make this a little bit lighter. So increase and decrease, increase, decrease. So this is a maximum. Uh, this is going to be, a, uh, it doesn't cross the x-axis, so I'm going to say that there is no um, max or min there, okay? So if it doesn't cross the x-axis, there is not a max or min there. Basically, what's happening is the graph is going to look something like something like this. It's not going to, it's not going to have a max or min there. And then this one here, um, so it's, it is um, decreasing then increasing, so I'm going to have a minimum here. Okay, so at x equals, I can't even tell what number that is. <laughs> you said they're fives. I'm going to say, it looks like the counting by fours, so I'm going to say, I'm going to say those are sevens. So I'm going to say at x equals negative seven, I have a max. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to, <laughs> to tell. And at x equals seven, I've got a min. For what values of x does, okay, so that's a and b there. Determine an open interval, uh, the graph is concave down. Okay, so concave down means that it has to have negative slope. So from negative infinity to negative four, concave down. And then there's a, from, um, zero to, let's say, four, concave down also. Okay. Um, and then let's see here. So those are where it's concave down. Then it says sketch the graph. Okay. So if I'm going to sketch this graph, I know that at negative seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's going to be a max, and I don't care where I put it. At positive 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, there's going to be a min, so let's put it down here. I could put it here, too. It really doesn't make any difference. And then, um, so I know that it's going to be increasing until it gets to this maximum value, so it's increasing. Then it's going to be decreasing, but at, where does it change? At 0, it's going to change concavity. So it's concave down now, and then it's going to change. I should have made that up. I should have put that point up here a little bit farther. So I, my graph will hit it. So now it's concave up. And then what else did we have? Oh, a minimum value. So then it's going to have to turn around again. So I, my point was really in a bad spot. So concave up, concave. Oop, I should concave down would be this way, wouldn't it? So I'd be like this. <laughs> and then goes back down. So it's kind of a kind of an interesting looking graph. Now, you can put when you have a graph, you can put the max and mins anywhere you want, okay? So I I don't care, you know, your graph could look totally different than this, okay? That's let me get rid of this. The only thing you really have to be careful with and the only thing i would look for is the concavity and all the the max and mins and all that kind of stuff so if i would do this again let's say i was going to do this problem again here's my graph i know that at negative seven there's a maximum value right i could put that maximum value let's say that this is negative seven here i could put it up here i could put it down here I could put it way down here. I could put it way up here. We don't know. We just know that there's a maximum value there. So I'm going to put a point there. And then I know at positive seven, there's a minimum value. But guess what? I could put that minimum value way up here if I wanted to. It makes no difference. I just know that this is going to go this way, right? Because it's a maximum. And I know that this one is a minimum. So it has, oh, I think my graph was wrong, wasn't it? Because if this is, if this is a min, it has to go this way. Oh, now I 
I'm going to get rid of that point there because I'm, you're not going to be able to see my graph. All right, so let me do this over again. Uh, so let me get rid of that. Okay, so let's let's do this again. So I'm going to put my minimum point right here. So I know that it has to go like this, doesn't it? If that's a minimum, this is a maximum. They both have to go like that. And then after the after the the minimum after the minimum point, it's always increasing. So I can go like this. And way over here, before it gets to the maximum, it's always increasing, right? So I know it has to go like this until it gets to this point. We'll put that point there. Now, the only thing I didn't know is concavity. And so from negative infinity to negative four, it's concave down. So let's say that this is negative four here. So I know it's going to be concave down. And this is concave down, right? Negative infinity to there. But then it's going to it's going to turn around and it's going to be concave up here. So I know that this is going to be this. And then let's go way up here. And then it's going to be concave down again. So it has to look something like that. So now, this is what I'm saying the f of x graph looks like. Given this is f prime, OK? Is there a maximum at negative 7? Yep, there's a maximum at negative 7. Is there a minimum at positive 7? Yep, this is positive 7 here, minimum, yep. Is it concave down between negative infinity and negative 4? Is it concave down? If this is negative 4, yes, it is. Concave up between 0, or I'm sorry, I should have, oh, that should have been negative 4 percent of it. Nah, <laughs> concave up between negative 4 and 0. Um, so negative 4 and 0, it's going to be concave up, and then it turns to concave down again. So my graph is going to look similar to that. Now it could, you, know, you could put that seven, you could put that way down here and it could come way down there and then go back up. You could put this maximum point way down here and it could come like this. That, I mean, those are things that you don't know. You just know where it's concave up, concave down. You know where the maximum end points are. You don't know what the graph looks like. You just know the shape of the graph where it's going to have a maximum point, where it's going to have a minimum point, where the concavity is changing. That's all you know, okay? Rarely will you ever get a problem that asks you to sketch the graph, okay? I never ask you that. I mean, on an assessment, I don't ask you to graph the graph. I just I just want you to know where is it, where's the max, where's the min, concave up, concave down. If there's any inflection points, um, where are those? Those are things that I'm looking for. I'm not looking for you to be able to graph it out because everybody's graph is going to look so different. The general shape should be the same, but they're going to look a little bit different. Okay, And when you think about it, how many max and mins do I have here? Um, you know, well, that's not a, a max there because your, your derivative graph and your regular draft sh graph should always be one <laughs> hump less. So and when you think about it, if f of x is this, it has one hump, then the derivative should have none because they always can be one less. Because when you take a derivative, what do we do? We take one, we take the derivative, we subtract one from the, the exponent. So it's always going to be one less. All right. Multiple choice question. It says, given the graph of y is equal to g of x, estimate the value of g prime of 2. Okay, so this one's going to ask us a little bit different of a question. So what would g prime of 2 be? Nope, it is not zero. This is the f, or this is g of x, okay? What does the derivative give us? What is a derivative? What is another word for derivative? What does it give us? Slope at any given point. So what they're asking us to do is they're asking us to find g prime of two. Well, first thing I did is I looked at where is x equals two? It's right here. 
So basically, what is the slope right here? That's what it's asking for. Now, I know it's not zero. I know it's not positive one. I know it's not positive four. It has to be either negative four or negative one. I'm, I'm kind of leaning more to negative four, right? Because, you know, negative one would be more this, you know, this type of slope. This is much more, you know, steep. So I would, I would go with negative four there instead of negative one. But zero, one, four can't even be, a, couldn't even be considered because I know the slope has to be negative there. Does that, does that make sense? Okay. This was a multiple, or this was a um, problem off an AP test. Okay. And, and I said, every year they always have a problem like this every year. Now, some of the problems um, you're not going to, well, I think we can answer all of them on this one. There are some of them that, you know, second semester, you'll be able to find the exact value. So for example, if they, during second semester, we'll be, you'll get a, a graph just like this again, and then they'll ask you, what is f of two? Well, right now, you, you don't know what f of two is equal to, because we, we don't have enough information. We need to be able to find area underneath curves, and that's where we start in second semester, finding area underneath curves, and that gives us the value of the function, okay? But we don't worry about that just yet. So in this problem, it says, let f be the function defined on the closed interval negative three to four with f of zero equals three. And that is really important next semester. <laughs> but right now, you don't know what to do with that information. The graph of f prime, the derivative of f consists of one line segment and a semicircle as shown above. On what intervals, if any, is f increasing? Okay, so what are the intervals where f is increasing. Negative three to negative two. I agree 100%, good. Part B, find the x coordinate of each point of inflection of the graph of f on the open interval. Okay, so what is, what are, are there any points of inflection? And if they are, what are they? And you, all you have to do is put down x equals. x equals negative 2. Is that it? I would say x equals 2 is also a point of inflection. Why would I say that? Because points of inflection are where the derivative graph changes slope from positive to negative or negative to positive. Well, here I have negative slope, positive slope. Here I have positive slope, negative slope. So there are two points of inflection. X equals zero is a point of inflection. Okay, so X equals zero is a point of inflection because the slope is changing. X equals two is a point of inflection. Points of inflection are where the slopes change from positive to negative or negative to positive. Okay, that's where you find your points of inflection. Part C, this is a uh, find an equation with line tangent to the graph of F. Okay, okay, we can do this one. So it says, find an equation for the line tangent of the graph of f, not this graph, because this is f prime, right? At point zero 0,3. All right. So in this problem, what is, or in any problem, when you're trying to draw, when you're trying to write an equation of a tangent line, what two pieces of information do you need? slope and point, okay? So I've got the point, they gave it to me. What is the slope at when x equals zero? What is the slope? Uh, 
it is negative two. It's absolutely correct. So now we have our point and we have the slope. So we can write an equation. Y is equal, to, oops, I'm sorry. Y minus three is equal to negative two X plus zero. Very good, excellent. All right, one more question, one more AP question. This is another problem off an AP test, okay? This is the derivative graph. They give it to us. They say this is the derivative graph. It says the figure above shows the graph of f prime, the derivative of function f on the closed interval between negative one and five. The graph of f prime has horizontal tangents at x equals one. Okay, so there's a horizontal tangent here. Um, and x equals three. So there's a horizontal tangent here. The function f is twice differentiable with f of two equals six. All right, part A, find the x-coordinate of each of the points of inflection of the graph. Okay, so what are the points of inflection to this graph? X equals what? X equals one, X equals three. I don't agree with X equals four, okay? And the reason I do not is because the slope does not change at four. This is positive slope, it's still positive slope. It The slope doesn't change. The only time you have a point of inflection is when the slope changes. So this is positive slope here, negative slope. Negative slope, positive slope. So x equals, x equals one and x equals three would be my points of inflection. Okay, now, is there something happening at four? Absolutely. Um, this is decreasing and increasing, so decrease, increase. There's a minimum value here, okay? But it, it is not a point of inflection. It does not change concavity there. All right, part B. At what values of x does f attain its absolute minimum value on the closed interval between negative one and five? At what value of x does f attain its absolute maximum value on the closed intervals? Show the analysis. Now, this is where you will be able to come up with the exact values in second semester. Right now, you're just gonna be able to tell me where the max and min values are. We already know there's a minimum value at four, right? X equals four is a minimum value because we go from decreasing to increasing. And well, there is no um, max or min here. So we can't say anything else. I would probably say that my maximum value would be way up here because the function is increasing and it keeps increasing to get there, but we don't care about that. Right now, there's no max because it doesn't cross the x-axis anywhere, okay? So we're just gonna go with x equals four as a minimum. Now here, this is the problem that most students will never be able to get, okay? It says, let g be the function defined by g of x equals x f of x. Find an equation of the line tangent to the graph of g at x equals two. Okay, I am going to give you, I'm gonna turn off my mic, I'm gonna give you some time to work on that. It is not an easy problem. Once you see the trick to it, it's not bad, but most kids don't see the trick. All right, give it a shot, see what you get.
Okay. So in this problem, it always goes back to, because it asks us to write an equation of a tangent line, right? So when I look at this, first thing that goes through my mind is equation of a tangent line, slope, and a point. So that's what I need. Okay, well, they tell me that g of x is equal to x f of x. Well, to find the point, because that's what we need, I need to find what g of 2 is equal to. Well, so I just plug 2 in. Okay, well, that's f of 2. They tell us is equal to 6. So my point, so g of 2, is equal to 12. So now I have a point. I know when, when x equals 2, g of 2 is equal to 12. Okay, does that make sense? How I came up with my point. Okay, now, finding the slope, that's a little bit, that's where the trick comes in. Because g of x is equal to x f of x. Well, guess what? This, I have to take the derivative of this. So this, to me, is a product rule. So I've got u equals x, u prime is equal to 1. V is equal to f of x. V prime is equal to f prime of x. Ah, I've got the f prime function here, right? So inside, so I've got 1 times f of x plus outside x times f prime of x. Well, it's at 2, so this is going to be f of 2 plus 2 times f prime of 2. Well, f of 2, we already know. They told us that in the beginning. It's 6. So this is going to be 6 plus 2 times f prime of 2. Well, f prime of 2 is negative 1, isn't it? So now I end up with a slope of 4. Yep. Exactly. And that's why they give us all these points on the graph. It's to help us out. Usually they don't give you all this information if you're not going to use it. So now y minus 12 is equal to 4 x minus 2. Kind of a cool problem. But I, I tell you, that problem right there, it takes everything that we've learned through the semester. You've got to be able to take the derivative using the product rule. You have to be able to use the derivative graph to find the slope at a given point. There, and this is what, where the, the problems on the AP test come in. They, they'll give you one problem, and then they'll ask you A, B, C, D type questions. And it starts off fairly easy. I mean, the A questions are fairly easy. B gets a little tougher, C gets tougher, and D, it's like, whew. <laughs> and if you're taking the AP test, what you every free response question is worth nine points okay you're not going to get nine points in every question it's it just doesn't happen however if you can average five points on every free response question you will get a five on the ap test it's just the way it works so on this problem this problem was probably worth two this was probably worth two this was probably worth four and that's how they and then you just add up the points, and that's what you get. All right, that was the last slide for today. Any questions on any of that stuff? All right, we will see you back here next week, same time, same place. You have a great day, too. And remember, the AP test or the, the semester exam is out there, so if you wanted, if you have extra time, you can definitely start working on it. All right. Have a good day.